So we'll start these, uh, these topics by looking at significance testing, also known as null hypothesis significance testing. Uh, we'll discuss the logic behind this dominant approach uh, to statistics and the social sciences and the history for why that has been, have become the case. Uh, we'll then look at the more recent criticisms of overuse of, of this approach um, and consider the types of decisions that can emerge from uh, using significance testing. And we'll consider the inferential decision making table, uh, what are the correct decisions that can be made and uh, the errors that can be made. And we'll then lead on to the alternative uh, recommended approaches. The easiest or the simplest way to think about uh, the logic of significance testing might be to consider the situation where I start tossing a coin and getting you to call uh, heads or tails. And let's say you had tails and I have a coin that I toss and I get one head, two heads, three heads, four heads. After about four or five heads in a row, you probably start to become suspicious that this isn't a normal 50-50 coin, but one that you would reject the null hypothesis that it's a 50-50 coin and start to say the evidence adds up to suggesting that it's a biased coin. Now what you're doing there is an intuitive kind of significance test which we do in, in everyday life. So th the logic is something that we um, work with commonly and we simply apply it mathematically so that we can do it, um, do it systematically and on the basis of um, real mathematics, not just uh, perceived mathematics. So in this approach, um, in, involves sampling from a population. If we have the entire population, then we don't need to use inferential significance testing. We simply count up how many reds and how many blues there are. And if there's more than one, then we know there's more than one, and that's uh, more than one type of colour, uh, and that's significant in that it's uh, it, that's true of the entire set of uh, units of interest. But that's quite inefficient to do all of that work, and we we don't actually need to do all of that work if we do true random sampling, and that is we take a representative sample from the population, then we can count up. Uh, the reds and the blues in the sample and make an inference based on uh, laws around um, random variability, make an inference and be right the vast majority of the time as to whether there is a difference in the population. So that's the logic uh, that's involved.